This video is a brief introduction to increasing and decreasing functions based on their graphs. In this first example, I've graphed two lines. The first line is an increasing function because as the x values go from left to right, the y values are going up. This can be written more formally by saying if x2 is bigger than x1, these are supposed to be x values, so that means that x2 is some x value that's to the right, so that it's bigger than x1. So whenever we have an x value x2 that's bigger than x1, increasing means that f of x2 has to be bigger than f of x1, so that the y values are getting bigger when the x values are bigger. The second line is an example of a decreasing function because here, as the x values increase from left to right, the y values are going down. So again, we can write this more formally by saying that whenever we have an x value, x2, that's bigger than x1, for example, this might be x2 and this might be x1, then the y value, f of x2, is less than f of x1 this time because here, when we have a bigger x value, we want to have a smaller y value to be decreasing. This second example gives the graph of a function that's increasing in some places, but decreasing in others. This part of the graph, here the function's decreasing because as the x values increase from left to right, the y values go down. Over here, we also have a part of the graph where the function is decreasing. Now, this part of the graph, the function is increasing because as x goes from left to right, the y values are going up. So I'll mark that one in green for increasing. And finally, on this part of the graph, the function's neither increasing nor decreasing. It's completely flat or constant. Now, we're asked to describe the intervals on which the graph is increasing or decreasing, so we describe those intervals in terms of the x values. It wouldn't make sense to describe them in terms of the y values because the y values can be the same for different parts of the graph, but the x values are always unique. To describe where this function is decreasing, that's for x values between negative 4 and negative 2 and between 4 and 7. I can write this using inequalities as negative 4 less than x less than negative 2 4 less than x, less than 7. It's not important whether I use less than or less than or equal to signs here. I'm going to use less than or equal to signs at the endpoints of the function's domain, where the function stops existing altogether, and I'll use strict less than signs just where the function starts or stops decreasing in the middle of its domain. But again, that's not important. To describe where the function is increasing, that's for x values in between negative 2 and 1. So I can write that as an inequality as negative 2 less than x less than 1. I can also describe these intervals in interval notation. So that would be close bracket negative 4, negative 2, open bracket, a cup sign for union, and then 4, 7 for the decreasing part, and the increasing part is negative 2, 1. I'm going to modify my graph just a little bit now by putting arrows on the end. When I have arrows instead of dots or just hard stops, that signifies that the function continues in the same direction forever. So if I write it like that, then the place where the function is increasing is still the same. It's still going to be from x values going from negative 2 to 1. But now the decreasing part of the function extends further. So this section, these x values extend all the way out to infinity, and it, we assume that it keeps going, it keeps decreasing here. So I would write that as for infinity. And similarly, the left part I would write as negative infinity, negative 2, because the function is going on forever in this direction too, so the x values go all the way to negative infinity on that chunk. 
So when talking about increasing and decreasing parts of functions based on graphs, the thing to remember is that x is going to be heading from left to right. As long as you do that, increasing just means that y goes up. Decreasing means that y goes down. And if you're describing the intervals, you have to do that in terms of x values.